Good morning all. I was just looking at some uh, TTL chips that I've got uh, from years ago and I've just happened to have found this. It's an LS253. Well that's a four line to one line uh, multiplexer and uh, that means I can have a little play with this um, idea of using this uh, data selector multiplexer as a configurable logic gate uh, for my arithmetic logic unit, the logic unit part of the ALU in my 8-bit computer. Now look what I found, I found uh, this, it's a hex switch. It's actually a rotary switch where you just dial in the hex number to uh, 8A, B, C, D uh, and it puts out a 4-bit code uh, of that hex value. That's fantastic. I was going to use a little 4-bit um, switch but this is even better the only thing is I can't remember quite how the uh, three pins at the front and the two pins at the back are wired up, but it'd be relatively easy to find out. So yeah, I can just dial in the hex code. Uh, four bits will go into the four input lines of the four to one multiplexer and then the output line will go to an LED. That's lovely. Right, this is proving quite tricky, but real fun actually, trying to work out which pins are which. I think I've worked out that the middle of the three is the common, so I've got that going to uh, ground. Now these are active low at the moment, so zero means all off. Uh, so think of the red light as a zero. Uh, this light here is switching on and off with every click, so that's got to be the least significant bit. That one's just turned off when I've got to eight, so I think that's the most significant bit. So I've just got to find the two bits in between. That shouldn't be hard. Right, that's worked it out. Um, you've got to remember that this is active uh, low, or these are on when they're not. So that's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and then 8. Uh, that one comes on, these go off, and uh, then we go through the pattern again with this one off. So that's F, and that's 0. So that certainly worked it out. Now this switch, um, connects the common to all four outputs when it's at zero and actually that's quite handy because I can use this to pull these LS inputs down because they naturally float high um, so I won't need any resistors I'll just simply connect the switch to the four inputs and then when these go to zeros it'll just pull those inputs low so the, the it'll all be the uh, the right logical sense Right, so I've put uh, three LEDs up here. I've got two switches. Um, when I press them, the LEDs come on because I'm providing a feed to uh, VCC. So I've got my two inputs there. My output's there. It does currently uh, work if I switch this switch between zero and F, but it's only half built. So I just want to get this uh, finished. I need a couple of pull downs on the two select inputs and then wire them to these switches. And I think that's it. Right, I think I've got it with some uh, harder pull downs. I had to use 1K, 10K just didn't seem to pull down enough. Um, so on zero, the output is zero, of course, irrespective of what the inputs do. On F, the output is one, again, irrespective of the inputs. That's not really a gate because the output's just one all the time. Uh, now I worked out that eight is an AND gate. So either inputs on their own don't put the output on, but both together do. So that's an out. That's an AND gate. Uh, so that's one o o o. So one 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 o, which is E, will be an OR gate. Either input puts the output on, or both will put the output on. That's E. Uh, six, which is o one one o, is exclusive OR. So the output is high when the inputs are different. Different, same, different, same. Both inputs high is same, so the output goes low. It only comes on when they're different, like so. Uh, opposite six is nine, so that'll be an exclusive NOR gate. Uh, the output goes off when the inputs are different. When they're the same, it goes on. Yeah, that works. Um, but I want to work out what all the others do. Uh, right, I've, I've worked out that A is actually the A pass-through. Um, A, nothing to do with A, that is. 
A is hexadecimal A, so that's 1010. Uh, but if I call these switches A and B, A is directly routed through the logic gate and sent to the output. So the, the logic gate is just a wire between the input, uh, the A input and the output. The B input is ignored. Uh, you can see that B doesn't affect the output either when it's high or low. And I did wonder whether conveniently B would be a B pass through and it kind of is actually. A is ignored as you can see, but it's the inverse B pass through. So B is passed through, but the output is the inverse of whatever the input is. Um, those are pure coincidence, but quite fun, isn't it? That uh, B is inverse B pass through. A is uh, A pass through. Yeah, that's good. Um, it looks like C hexadecimal is actually the B pass through with A being ignored. Yeah, that's a B pass through. So B goes straight to the output, uh, whatever A is doing. So again, it's not a gate, it's just a link between B and the output. B is directly uh, controlling the output. A has no part in it. Now, if I use the convention um, that the least significant bit is always on the right, which is what you would do when you're programming, I suppose. Um, the least significant select bit is S0. And I've actually got that linked up to the left of these two switches. So unfortunately, I've got to swap these two wires around. Now that means um, that A pass through is not going to be A conveniently anymore. Uh, but never mind, that's, uh, that was just a coincidence. So uh, yeah, that still seems to work. So I'm just um, creating a table here for the hex switch values. I've got a bit close to the bottom there. Uh, those in binary. And then we can work out um, how these bit arrays, these bit patterns, I suppose they are, control how the actual logic gate works. Let me just complete that. Right, so let's take the case of the OR gate. Um, what we want, remember these four bits are selected by the binary pattern on the two inputs. So if the two inputs are both low, it's going to select this fourth column. Uh, but of course in binary we think of this as the least significant bit. Um, this will be 01 on these two switches. This third column will be 10 and this will be 11. So what we want is uh, for an OR gate the output to go high when both the inputs are high. So 11 will be this column. I suppose I should mark this as the inputs. That's 11, 1001 and 0. Uh, oh. Oops. That's a bit rubbish. Uh, yeah, so these are the combinations of my two inputs and they select uh, one of these four outputs. It's a one of four selector. So I want uh, when both the inputs are high, the output is high, but low in all other cases. So I want eight. Let me rotate my switch to eight. I want that pattern and that will give an OR gate. When either input goes high, oops, no, I've done an <laughs> I've done an AND gate, haven't I? Um, only when both the inputs are high do we have a high output. In all other cases, we have a low output. So 8 is certainly an AND function. So I can, was it AND? Yes, it was AND. It's, both of those need to be pressed high in order for the output to go high. So 8 is AND. OK, now I can carry on working through this to work out what functions the others do. Well, here's one that we uh, we know. Um, if for an OR we want both inputs to be high but also these two combinations where only one input is high will give us a 1. So we actually want this one, 1, 1, 1, 0. We want E and that will give us an OR function because only when both inputs are low, naught, naught, do we get a low output. Uh, all other combinations we get a high output. So E will give me an OR gate. So let me rotate this to E. Uh, which is there, and that will give me an OR gate. Either input goes high, the output goes high. Of course, if both inputs go high, the output goes high. So yes, that is OR. Um, actually, it'd be better if I zoomed in a bit, wouldn't it? Right, exclusive OR is 6 on the switch, which is 0110. Uh, you can see that I've selected the switch there. The output will uh, go high when the inputs are different. So that's different, that's high, that's the same, that's low. Different high and both on is the same. So the output is low, that's XOR. Um, now we worked out that 9101 
is the x nor, so I can put that in x nor. Uh, let me rotate this switch to position 9. That's 9. Now the output is high when the inputs are the same. Make them different, the output goes low. Same, output is high. Make them different, the output goes low. So yes, 9 gives us x nor function. Now if E is OR 1110, then 0001 will be NOR because um, we want the outputs, I've, I've put it on uh, 1, pattern 1, 0001, we want the output to be high only when both inputs are low. So this would normally be an OR gate where that would be low. Any other combination, the output goes low, it's only high when both inputs are low. So that's a NOR. Now NAND will be the opposite of AND. So AND is 1000. Uh, NAND will be 0111, which will be 7. So that will be right next to there. So NAND is 7. Let's try that. Let's rotate it to 7. There it is. That should be NAND. Uh, the output is high when both inputs are low. Uh, yes, that's right. Only the low, low, no, high, high on the input gives you a low on the output. All other combinations give you a high on the output. That's a NAND. Right, here's a couple more. Um, all zeros there, of course, will always give you a zero on the output. Uh, I'm switched to zero. Irrespective of what the input does, the output simply stays at zero and does nothing else. So that's an all zero gate. It's not really a gate, is it? It just is always zero. Totally disregards all combinations of the uh, input. Similarly, if I put it to F, then the output is always a one, irrespective of my input combination. So we've got always a zero, always a one. Right, now the other functions get a bit more complicated, but um, I've gone back to A hexadecimal being the A pass-through, but I've had to contrive something, and that is that the A switch is the right switch and the B switch is the left switch. Um, that does make some sense because if you have uh, the least significant switch here as A and the most significant switch as B, then it kind of works. So it's on A here, A hexadecimal, that's the code. So it's 1010 and we have an A pass through. If A is the rightmost switch, then the rightmost switch is fed through to the output. Uh, always the leftmost switch is ignored in both cases. So yeah, if we do it that way around, A is A pass through. So that's the A pass. Now that is 1010, which passes through uh, A. Uh, oh, um, it's too complicated. Uh, right, so C1100 is the B pass through. Um, assuming B is the leftmost switch, so that's on uh, hexadecimal code C, that's 1100. Uh, that passes B, which is the leftmost switch. You can see the output is just whatever B is, irrespective of what happens on A. The output follows the left switch, so that's a B pass. Um, now I've got a feeling that B and, uh, ooh, I don't know actually. Right, so C1100 is the B pass-through, the B switch pass-through. Uh, the opposite of that, which is 0011, so it's position 3, is actually uh, not B pass, not B pass. Uh, so in position 3, which it is at the moment, it passes through not B, this is the B switch, you can see it's the opposite of B, irrespective of what A is doing, it doesn't care about the A switch. It just is always the opposite of B. So that's the not B pass. So presumably the not A pass will be the opposite of this, which will be 0101, which is 5, which is there. So this will be the not A pass. That will pass through not A. Let's give it a try. A's on the right. Uh, have I switched it to 5? No, I haven't. Let's turn it to 5. There it is. So that's not A. Uh, A is on the right switch. So the output is always the opposite of that irrespective of what happens on the left-hand switch. So yeah, that's the not A pass-through. 
Now the last four are giving me a bit of jip. I can't quite uh, work out what these are. Um, the output is only a one in one of the four states of the uh, the two uh, the four input combinations. So it's kind of an and, but it's only uh, true when the inputs are zero one. So I think what it is is it's a and not b. So if you have a, so let's go through the four combinations. Uh, it's low, low, low. It's only high there, which is A is high and B is low. So I'm pretty sure it's A and not B. I think that's what it is. Um, the opposite of that two o o one o is here, D1101. So let's flick it round to uh, D. That's D. And now what it is, um, what is it? The output is only low when you have this combination. Now in a normal uh, OR, the output would only be low if both inputs are low. And here we've got a low on B. So is it B or not A? B or not A? Uh, so, oh, that's complicated. Yeah, so it's definitely an OR function because uh, it's only low for one of the uh, four combinations of two inputs. And it's only low when I put uh, switch A high. So inverting A would mean that both A and B now are low and the output is low. So it's uh, the OR of B and not A. Pretty sure that's it. And that probably means that this one, uh, 1011, so B will be uh, not B ORD with A. And uh, this one here for, so 0100, will almost certainly be not A. I should really keep B on the left at all times. And it with B. So in other words, the inverse of this one here. So I'm pretty sure those are the 16 logical functions um, of this two input one output gate which you can uh, switch with this 16 way switch you can get all of these logic gates some of them are a bit bonkers like the output is always zero or the output is always one but you can also get these combinations of uh, or exclusive or and nand just pass a through just pass b through uh, pass the inverse of B through, so it becomes a B inverter, or pass the inverse of A through, that's there somewhere. And then these combinations are anding one input, but with the other one inverted. So yeah, 16 different weird logic gates. Um, so let me just complete this by drawing the four to one multiplexer as a sort of elongated gate. So it's like that, the two inputs A and B go in, the output um, we can call, I don't know, Q. And then the four select lines are um, these four bits here, which I'm currently dialing in with one of these 16 way uh, switches. And the pattern that you put on these four lines are, is actually the truth table. So um, if you want an AND gate, uh, now it's actually sort of not what not what you'd normally draw it as, but an AND gate is, um, it's a high when both inputs are high and it's low in all other instances. So yeah, you just place your truth table on these four lines, you've got to get them the right way around, and this gate becomes this function. Now, have eight of these gates with all of these configuration lines paralleled up, and you can have an eight bit uh, A word an 8-bit B word and an 8-bit Q output doing parallel uh, logical um, combinations of A and B providing uh, an 8-bit well, A and B providing an 8-bit Q. Um, we'd need four of these chips because there are actually two of these multiplexes in the chip. I'm only using one side of the chip here. The other side's not really wired up at all. So I'd need four of these chips and I could have um, an 8-bit B, an 8-bit A and an 8-bit Q logical unit. So I've been using um, an LS253 because uh, I just happen to have one. The 253 has tri-state outputs uh, and I've just permanently enabled 
the outputs. Um, I've actually bought HC153s because I couldn't find any HC253s. Uh, they differ, they don't have the tri-state outputs, but then I don't need tri-state output because I'm not placing the output of the logic unit directly onto my bus. So the 153s are fine, they have an enable input, which again would be just tied to be permanently enabled. Uh, yeah, so when I get uh, four of these chips, I'm going to build a little vertically stacked, uh, four on top of each other, 8-bit uh, wide logic unit, and then perhaps have a play with that. Um, yeah, so that was fun. Um, a two input, one output logic gate, which could be configured to do have 16 different logical functions um, using a four input, one output or four line to one line uh, multiplexer or data selector. Yeah, that was cool. Cheerio.